Hello, and welcome back to another Create Mod tutorial. Today we are going over the machines you see behind me, which are late game gold farms, which produce about 500 gold ingots per hour. And as you can see, are quite complicated and big and use a bunch of late game items. Most notably, funnels and chutes are brass. There's also some brass tunnels. And then more most notably, these crushing wheels. We have seven sets, so 14 total of crushing wheels. If you're like, oh, that's good news. I have a crushing wheel farm, then uh, yeah, this is probably the farm for you. This farm also uses the standard create mod functionality of getting gold. So through red sand, which means you don't need any other sub mods like tough creation into gold or anything like that. So if you're just using the base create mod, this farm might be perfect for you. It also, as you can see, uses 40,000 stress units, which again, for late game is not too much. Even for like mid game, it's not too much. If you really need some gold, it's just like a third of a steam generator. So this farm includes everything but the power input. As you can see, I'm using a creative motor here. In order to make gold from cobblestone, there are quite a few steps. The rates specifically are about 500 gold ingots per hour not nuggets, ingots. I've been running this for 20 minutes or so, so far, and we're at 208 gold ingots. And once this thing gets up to speed, it does actually produce quite a bit pretty quickly. The farm starts out with this cobblestone generator that only works in version 0.5.1.f. So double check your create mod version before you paste the schematic into your world. After the cobblestone is generated, it is dropped onto this belt and brought up into the first vault here and first set of crushing wheels. We need three sets of crushing wheels to successfully process all of the cobblestone that is generated. Once we have a stack of cobblestone in this vault, it goes down into one of the open smart chutes into the crushing wheels. They then go down onto that belt below, brought back up to the second set of crushing wheels that then crush gravel into sand, flint, and clay balls. The same process is repeated where a belt brings it back up here to this system where clay balls and sand are dropped. Sand is washed to turn into clay balls at I think a 25% chance. And all the clay balls are picked up and put into this item vault. This item vault then drops the clay balls into three basins, again, to keep up with the speed of this cobblestone generator. These basins crush clay balls into clay. When a stack is fully made, the clay blocks get dropped out onto this belt. They go through here and get heated up and cooked by these lava fans here. Once they are cooked, they turn into terracotta, are filtered through this tunnel, and brought up to the final set of crushing wheels that turns terracotta into red sand. This red sand is then bulk washed to turn into, as you can see, gold nuggets and dead branches. As you all know, dead branches are wildly important, so those are thrown immediately into a lava cauldron while the gold ingots, or while the gold nuggets are converted into gold ingots and stored. You can change this to be a gold block and store that instead. If you're building the schematic, there are quite a few things to go through. I'm not doing a block by block tutorial in this video. Instead, I'm just going to be going over placing in the schematic with a schematic cannon and everything you need to think about and double check before starting the farm. Nothing specifically will break but you might get a bunch of cobblestone or other blocks flying out into the abyss, which uh, you don't want. You'll also notice that I have a farm over here that isn't running, and I'm going to place in one farm with a schematic cannon just so that you can follow along identically and it is super easy. For all the people that know how to use schematics, just skip to the timestamp on the screen now and we will get on with building this thing after placing down the schematic. If you've never used a schematic, there will be a link in the description to the create mod schematic website where you can download it and put it into your schematics folder. You can access your schematics folder by building a schematic table. The recipe is really simple. It's just slabs on top of smooth stone. But once you're in here, you can click the open folder button and that will bring you to your schematics folder. You just drag and drop the .nbt file into there and then it will show up here once you click the refresh button. Once you've refreshed, you should see a late game gold farm where you can throw in a schematic, hit the check mark, and it will load it into the schematic for you. You can then walk around with the schematic and right click to place it into your world as a kind of just blueprint that then the schematic cannon will follow. I have already done this with a schematic facing this way so that we get all four cardinal directions in. And once you place it in the schematic cannon, you're going to need to add gunpowder and place chests around it 
with all of the necessary ingredients. I'm going to have all the ingredients in the description down below, but if you hate reading, you can also place a book in the schematic canon and get a material checklist that lists everything you need, including super glue, which is actually really important. There are a couple things that this misses, including lava and water. As you can see, just right there, we'll need some lava and there's not going to be lava in this book. So make sure you get a couple lava buckets and an infinite water source. When it's being placed in, it should look something like this, where the schematic cannon is just firing blocks in an order. And once this completes, we should get something that looks very similar to this with a lot of broken things on it. Once the schematic cannon's done, it's going to make a little ding, and you'll see that the schematic that once had the thing in it is now an empty schematic ready for reuse. Depending on the direction, you'll also maybe notice that some items fall out or just get removed from the schematic, which we'll go over. And this is a weird thing that tunnels are stupid and uh, it's I didn't make the create mod, so it's not my fault. But tunnels are stupid, so we'll fix that once we're going over how to actually make this thing work. We just placed in the schematic here and an identical one here at two different directions so we can go through the two different options that we have. The first thing that you'll notice, at least for me, and I think this is the case for other people, is that the item vault are uh, a little bit broken. So you just have to break them and replace them like this. And this one, actually three wide one worked the first time, but you'll see here that this one is like a two wide one and then an additional one. So you just have to break it and replace it. And you should see three wide vaults here. Make sure you do this with this one as well. The one down here where the clay is getting squooshed, I would break two of these and replace it just because it's kind of hard to tell which one of the item vault blocks is actually broken. And then for this one, I just break a whole corner row and then redo it all the way back like this. And you should have one big item vault here. Once the vaults are placed in, I recommend also replacing th these fluid tanks because again, they're wacky looking. I don't know if this is actually broken but I do it every time just because it's scary to look at. So first with water, we're going to open up all of these trapdoors and place lava in these mechanical pumps like this. And this is going to make it so that the water spreads. And even though we didn't place water blocks here, since we placed one here, here and here, this one fills up and the same is true for the rest of them. So it's just another infinite water source type of thing. So once all of those water blocks are in, they should fill every single mechanical pump just like this you can then close up these trap doors and then i would verify just holding out super glue that this whole section is glued together including the andesite funnels and spruce trap doors above it for me it is sometimes the schematic cannon doesn't use or require glue so if you either didn't supply glue or it didn't work make sure these are all glued together and then separately make sure that this gantry carriage linear chassis brass funnel barrel contraption it's a two by three space is glued together and when both of those are glued you should be good now we can move on to the item deletion cauldrons first one is going to be here which just takes the dead bushes and throws them out and then the second one you can see from the back here this flint brass funnel has a cauldron right underneath if we go up top it's just this cauldron right here if we place a lava bucket in there, all the flint will get thrown out as well because you don't need 20,000 flint an hour. Then we got a lot waterlog some leaf blocks. There are two leaf blocks in this build. The first one is right on the front there, is all way in the open and super obvious to find. The other one is a little bit more hidden. You can either look through these this hole that we're going to fill in with lava later or through this smaller one and just right click this leaf block. One thing I forgot before you put in the lava here is to place in a terracotta block on this brass tunnel and double check the other sides to make sure that there is no terracotta block somewhere else. Then we can put in the last two lava buckets and these are going in front of the encased fans to cook the clay into terracotta. So just right click twice on these blocks and you should see two lava sources there. The final place that we need to put lava in are these top fluid tanks. There are three fluid tanks here, so just place in three buckets of lava, and you should see in the little glass things a lava source here. That is all the lava that you need to place in. Then, the super annoying part that I mentioned previously about the brass tunnels, you can see that this one has no filters on it, and we had one of these list filters drop out onto the ground. That is because, for some reason, depending on the way that you place it, this list filter will be on a different side. So if you get unlucky and it's on this side where there's no belts, it'll just pop off and fall to the ground instead of being in the spot that you want it. This was the case for this one as well, where the list filter was here. 
instead of on this block spot like this. So I would break this crushing wheel and double check that there is a list filter on this funnel just there. The same thing is going to be the case here. Obviously, once the red sand is converted into gold and dead bushes, it'll go over here and then we need to sort out gold nuggets from the dead bushes. For me, the gold nugget is here, which would prevent dead bushes from ever going in here and backing up the system. So if that's the case or you have a dead bush here, this should be empty and gold nuggets should be here right in front of the gold basin, which hopefully makes sense. And then the dead bushes should be here so that they go and get thrown out into lava. The final tunnel thing being stupid is this one over here, which I guess in hindsight, we probably should have fixed before putting in lava. Uh, so previous Skylar fixed that. Thank you. And so with some movie magic, we already fixed this. Oh, I forgot to place back that block. Oopsie daisy. The last thing we need to do before we power this thing on is to set the rotation speed controller direction. This is going to be either counterclockwise or clockwise, depending on which way you built your farm. I'm going to only talk in the orientation of the farm facing the farm from this direction. So if I'm standing here and I'm facing the farm and I see seven crushing wheels and I am looking south, then I'm going to say I'm just building it in the south direction. Same for west, north, and east. The direction of the farm does matter. So for west and south, you will need to set the rotation speed controller to counterclockwise. This is the case for all three rotation speed controllers, even though two of them are used just for the cobblestone generator. I have noticed that some cobblestone gets lost if you do not have the rotation speed controller set in the correct direction. So as a refresher for west and south, put the rotation speed controllers, all three of them in counterclockwise and for north and east, set them to clockwise. The schematic by default is going to have it set to clockwise. So for the north and east people, you don't need to do anything. For the south and west people, you need to switch it from clockwise to counterclockwise. It is as simple as that. And then you repeat that process for the three different rotation speed controllers. I suppose this one's counterclockwise, but we'll switch it to clockwise. And then the same thing for this one. This one's clockwise, switch it to counterclockwise. There we go. So you just invert whatever it is if you're in the south or west directions. Now that should be everything. Again, nothing's going to break if you turn it on and it's not working. So when you turn it on, I would verify that this belt is turning in towards this item vault and that all the crushing wheels are spinning the same way. If that's the case, you should first see cobble generation occurring. If this isn't the case, you're likely not in the correct create mod version, which is version 0.5.1.f. If you're in the correct create mod version, make sure that these mechanical pumps are facing downwards. They are all waterlogged and these are filled with lava. Then double check that the cobblestone is coming up into this item vault and the item vault after it reaches a stack is reducing itself back down to four or whatever the number and that gravel is going to be coming on these three belts, some more than others, into this item vault and getting crushed again. You should then see that this item vault occasionally fills up with sand, clay, and flint, and that the flint is getting thrown out into this lava here. Then from underneath or with a free cam mod like I have, check to make sure that the clay and sand are being pushed and washed by this fan with water in front of it and turning into clay balls. Once the clay balls are being made, they should go into this item vault and out into these basins here. Some will have priority over others, so there is a very good chance that some like this one are still empty, but as long as one or two are working at pretty much full speed, you should be okay. Then once you get a stack of clay blocks, you should see here that the clay is stopping and waiting to be smelted into terracotta before moving on. If you don't see any clay here after you're certain, that clay blocks have been crafted, make sure you set the tunnel to terracotta from the correct direction, which is from over here. You'll have to remove the lava, probably remove this brass funnel to get to it, but really it isn't that difficult. Then you should see terracotta come up this belt up all the way into this item vault here. Once that happens, it'll get crushed and turned into red sand that should be being washed. You should see red sand on the belt 
and if there's extra red sand just floating next to it. Even if this looks like the red sand is going to despawn or there's gold floating here and it's not getting picked up, it will eventually get picked up. It's just kind of how the order of operations works. If for some reason you're not getting any gold or anything like that for a really long time, make sure this filter is set by removing this crushing wheel, taking out the filter and verifying that it has gold nuggets and dead bushes there. Once the dead bushes and gold nuggets are crafted, they should go towards this brass funnel, brass tunnel, and split into gold nuggets and dead bushes on this other belt here. The gold nuggets should be crafted into gold ingots placed on this depot and placed in the barrel here. If you test this for half an hour to an hour and you have 250 and 500 about gold ingots, then you'll know that it's working pretty effectively. It does take a little bit of time to speed up to the max speed, mostly because of these clay crafting systems they take a while to get up to full speed but once that's done you should be getting quite a bit of gold ingots if you're not getting a lot and it feels like not all of the clay compactors are being created or you don't have a lot of terracotta being made then i would check in this middle system here in the crushing wheels to see if maybe a lot of cobblestone is getting stuck in this item vault or a lot of gravel in this one and if you have any questions, let me know down in the comments or in my Discord that you can find in the description. And I think that's it. Those are all the steps that you need to recreate the schematic in your world. And let me know if you prefer the block by block tutorial or if you like this schematic walkthrough. I think for the more complicated builds like this one, I, the schematic walkthrough makes more sense. And since this is a late game farm, I hope everyone knows how schematics work. And if you don't, there are some great tutorials on YouTube explaining in a much better way than I did how they work. But yeah, that is all. Thank you all so much for watching. If you liked this build, the schematic, this video, leave a like. And if you're not subscribed, do it. All right, peace.